Pyramids of many types have been found all throughout the ancient world. From the Great Pyramid of Giza to the pyramidal burial mounds of the emperors of the Han Dynasty to the pyramid-like hills of Bosnia. While the similarities among them are fairly superficial, there are other distant pyramids bearing a striking resemblance to one another. Take for example the Prasat Ton Temple at Koh Kha, Cambodia, once the capital of the Khmer Empire. The 30 meter tall structure was built sometime between 928 and 944 AD. Now compare that with the temples of Tikal in Guatemala, built by the Mayan civilization as late as 700 AD. So how is it that these two structures from two different countries, from two different hemispheres, could be so similar? After all, according to the history we learn in school, these two parts of the world did not know the other existed. According to textbooks, it would be generations upon generations later before the Vikings and the Spaniards made their way across the Atlantic. Others have noticed the similarities as well. According to author Peter L. Martinez, these ancient cultures had higher light psychic abilities, as supposedly revealed by someone called the Ancient One. The architectural ideas would have been transferred around to the various cultures through something. In a way, we just don't understand with empirical evidence. The phenomenon is also explained through biochemist and parapsychologist Rupert Sheldrake's concept of morphogenic fields, or basically involuntary subconscious telepathic communications. And then there are those such as Zechariah Sitchin, who firmly asserts that the entire practice of pyramid building was brought to Earth during the colonization of the planet by an ancient race of extraterrestrials known as the Anunnaki. As part of our research, we put the question to the Rocket Boom Facebook group, and many suggested it's natural for people to come to the same kinds of conclusions separately. Aaron Johnson writes, Architecture serves a function. Through trial and error, it is possible for two unrelated societies to independently arrive at the best method of achieving that function. This is a compelling explanation for a lot of inventions, and can very well explain it. Aside from some of the more obvious aspects of the architecture, such as the use of large blocks, there are so many details that appear to be the same. However, this theory that it would be obvious keeps the mind wandering. Of course, all of these theories were built with the presupposition that the ancient cultures of the world were incapable of oceanic exploration, and that their contact with other people was limited to only those reachable by foot or beast of non-burden. As it were... Senior science correspondent for the New York Times, John Noble Wilford, recently compiled a whole slew of professional opinions, suggesting the ability to build and sail in boats may go back not just hundreds, or even thousands of years, but hundreds of thousands of years, possibly even to our early pre-human ancestors. Totally curious, wild and crazy, discontent, rebel without a cause, if it were me, I'd make it. Robert M. Shoke, professor of natural science at the College of General Studies at Boston University, has a similar theory. In his book, Voyages of the Pyramid Builders, Dr. Shoke argues in favor of the existence of a lost civilization of pyramid-building seafaring people who spread their cultural influence around the globe. Dr. Shoke also suggests that much of the cultural development of human history has been started, stopped, and restarted numerous times due to numerous natural disasters, which have further obscured a lot of our supporting evidence. And what about the Mayans themselves? We know so little about them. Archaeologists are still busy uncovering ruins and deciphering hieroglyphic meaning. Who's to say they're unable to get around? All in all, there are a wide number of theories seeking to explain why there are similar pyramids all over the planet, and while we might not yet know the answers, we certainly are reminded that there is still plenty of work to be done in understanding human history.